time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by Remington Rand, makers of the world's number one electric shaver, the Remington. Now, let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. (laughs) And on my left, the young man about whom there is a very nice article and a cover (coughs) picture in the current TV guide with his bride, Steve Allen. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you. Well, if that's the way you're going to feel about it, I uh, must report that there's a very nice story about you in the current issue, or rather the uh, September issue, of uh, Good Housekeeping. And I also would like to point out... <laughs> there's nothing about me. <laughs> no, there is something about you, Arlene, in next month's Popular Mechanics. I saw... <laughs> Arlene Francis. <laughs> I never knew a popular mechanic. <laughs> but you're popular with mechanics. <laughs> and on my left, the mirthful maestro of Mount Kisco, Bennett Cerf. <laughs> well, on my left, our famous panel moderator, who my mind call the rambunctious, wry, roustabout, <laughs> John Charles Daly. <laughs> Everybody's being alliterative tonight. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Uh, Once again tonight, we are up to our old tricks. My friends on the panel are going to have a rough time, I think. We've got some very nice people with some very uh, surprising occupations in the main, and we'll let the panel tussle with them. Later on, we'll have a mystery challenger, a famous guest challenger before the panel, but I think it's time they met our first challenger right now, so would you sign in, please, ma'am? Mary? Mary Detweiler, is that right? I had a school teacher who used to write with that same firm hand. Is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs. Detweiler. Where are you from? Perkinsey, Pennsylvania. Do that again? Perkinsey, Pennsylvania. Perkinsey, Pennsylvania? Where is that near? Between uh, Allentown and... Philadelphia. And Philadelphia. Oh, yes, I know that country well. I've got some country that I know well that you're not familiar with, but I'd like you to go see if you like it. Would you take a walk over and let the panel see you, please? Hello, Mr. Detweiler. All right, Mrs. Detweiler, over here now, if you will, and sit down next to me. The panel has had a chance to meet you, and we give them one free guess as to what your line may be. And we begin the free guesses with Dorothy Kilgallen. I think Mrs. Detweiler makes apple pan dowdy. Ah, Mr. Allen. This is very peculiar. I'm getting all sorts of extrasensory waves tonight, uh, but I won't bother you with my personal problems. I was going to say <laughs> something like that. I think she makes something called uh, Mother Detweiler's uh, Old Fashioned Pancakes. <laughs> Miss Francis. I think Mrs. Detweiler bottles no cow. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sir. Well, is it one of the greatest lady golfers in the United States and loveliest is named Helen Detweiler. Now, I'll bet Mary can outdrive her by 20 yards. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm afraid nobody has it exactly right in any degree whatsoever, so we'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Mary M. Detweiler. At the same time, we will tell them what her line is, but... <laughs> Mrs. Detweiler, we'll see what the panel can do. Do you know how we score this operation? I flip a card yes. every time you say no, okay? Yes. Good deal. Mrs. Detweiler is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett, sir. Well, Mrs. Detweiler, you look like a lady who enjoys good food. Does your work have anything to do with anything to eat? No. One down and nine to go. (laughs) Crashing beginning, Miss Kilgallen. Do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes. Is there any product involved in what you do? Yes. It's not an edible product, is it? No. No, it is not an edible product, yes. (laughs) Sorry. Um, Is it in any sense apparel? Apparel? Mm Mm-hmm. No. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. Could it be used indoors? Yes. Uh, Would it be fairly unusual? Well, would you be more likely to find it indoors than out? 
No. No. No, and I would say it could be used indoors, but that is not normal. Uh, That's three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Uh, was this uh, particular product uh, ever alive? No. No, I don't think so. Four down and six to go, Mr. Seth. Well, this product is not edible. It's not, is it used as any kind of furniture or de house decoration? No. Furniture or house decoration. That's five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, is this product consumed? You mean eaten? In the normal course of events. No, is it used up? Used up? Is, mm. Does its substance disappear? Is that what you mean? It doesn't have to disappear. It could just <laughs> get a little beat up. <laughs> well, I think since we have to take the measurement here as a matter of... I could explain it a little further. If you <laughs> All right, go ahead. Well, um, in the normal course of a year, would a person be apt to buy more than one of these things? If yes. you had them at all? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. Because something has happened to it. Is that it? Yeah, you'd be more... You, a normal person would buy more than one if they needed them. Is yes. the, Does this have any moving parts? Moving parts? No. No. That's six down and four to go, Mr. Allen. Is it bigger than the bread box? No. <laughs> Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. Is it liquid rather than solid? Eight no. down and two to go, Mr. Sir. Could you buy this article in a department store? Yes. Would it possibly be for sale in the notions department? I have a notion it wouldn't. No. <laughs> Nine, down... In the notions department. <laughs> Nine down and one to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is anything ever put into this thing? You mean... Mm. No. No, I don't think anything is put into it after it becomes into being as an entity of itself. Well, what is it? <laughs> this is really going to shock you all. Mrs. Detweiler stitches baseballs. Oh. 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 Down in, you do it, do it in Percocy? Yes. Well, you, uh... I do it in my home. Do it in your home. Well, you what tied the... Brand, what brand baseball? I don't know. Yes, Steve. This sounds like one of Bennett's jokes, but I bet a stitch in time saves many a nine. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. Well, and I'll finish this by saying Mrs. Detweiler tied you all up into stitches of some kind or another. Mrs. Detweiler, it was fun having you with us. We hope you had fun. Thanks very much for being our guest. All right, panel. Let's see what you can do with a second challenger. Would you sign in, please, sir? Frank? Oh, yes, Frank Clancy, right? Uh, Mr. Clancy, where are you from? Uh, New York City. New York City? Oh, well, <laughs> Sharks, you know all those people then, yes, but sir. they don't know you as well as they'd like to. Would you walk over that way and let them have a look at you? Hi, sir. How you doing? All right, Mr. Clancy, over here and sit down next to me, if you will. And uh, we'll let them have that one free guess that they get. And we begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think he's an interior decorator. Interior director. <laughs> interior decorator, Mr. Allen. Mr. Clancy has rather a carefree air about him. I think he's a barker at a carnival. Miss Francis. I think Mr. Clancy lowers the boom. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sir. I think he's a makeup artist. A makeup artist. Nobody has it. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mr. Frank J. Clancy. At the same time, we will tell them what his line is. <laughs> All right, Mr. Clancy, you know how I score this thing? Sure. We flip the car. <laughs> All right, Mr. Clancy is salaried. Let's begin the general questioning <laughs> with uh, Steve Allen. I wish I knew why they were laughing already, but it's... Uh, <laughs> is there any sort of a product connected with your work, sir? Uh, yes, sir. Is it something that I could hold in my hand? Yes, sir. I wonder if perhaps the reason that is amusing, in a loose sense anyway, is that it might be more normal for the lady of the house to come into contact with this thing. Would it be, you say you think it might be more, more normal, normal for the lady of the house to uh, come into contact with whatever this object is? Uh, most often, most often. Uh, since I could hold it in my hand, uh, could a lady 
carry this from place to place, possibly? Yes, she uh, would carry it from one place to another, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> she certainly would, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I won't try to find out what the places are right now. I can go back <laughs> for that. Um, if she was carrying it from place to place, this is vacation season. Might you ever, uh, well, you might you find one of these things around, say, a hotel resort or something of that sort? Yes, sir. Yeah. Could you ever find one on the beach? Yes, sir. Find it? Would you find it on the beach? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me straighten out one thing. Would it be more normal for the woman, say, to, to carry it than it would for her to uh, wear it or something like that? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, on the beach. Might this thing ever be very gaily colored? It has many colors. <laughs> Good. Uh, might she ever put this on her head to keep the sun off or something? <laughs> no. no. One down, nine to go, Miss Francis. Would this also be found indoors, Mr. Clancy? Uh, yes, yes. Is it an attractive product? Uh, no. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Mm -hmm. Stern. Not an attractive product, Mr. Clancy. You say it comes in many colors? You, you said yes, it, it has colors. many colors. Why, it has many it colors. It has many colors, yeah. Is this used for any kind of cleansing or exterminating or <laughs> business of that sort? No. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. If this thing comes in many colors, is it made up of more than one type of uh, ingredient? Yes. And it's not attractive? No. Yes, it is not attractive. When the housewife is carrying it from place to place, is she hoping to get rid of it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, is this anything that, mu that might have to do with cooking or food? It is. Uh, there is a connection, but... Yeah. Well, after the food isn't really attractive food anymore, uh, is it in this classification? Yes. Do you have something to do with garbage? Yes. That's right, yes. <laughs> now all you have to do is to discover what it is Mr. Clancy has to do with it. I hope he disposes of it as quickly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's to be presumed. Everybody does, but... Um, well, he drives a garbage disposal truck? A garbage disposal truck? That makes it... No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, he just throws it away. <laughs> in one way or another. <laughs> He's uh, in charge of, uh, I mean, where it ends up, wherever that is. He's a dump man. No, not no. a dump man. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Does Mr. Clancy own a private garbage company? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Well, I wouldn't want to incinerate anything, but does he incinerate? <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't want to incinerate oh. anything. Have you anything to do with that gentle process called incineration? No. Seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Now, you don't make it. <laughs> you make something out of it. Do you work out of doors? Yes. Do you go from place to place? Yes. Do you collect garbage? No. That makes it eight down and two to go, Mr. Allen. <laughs> you collect stamps. <laughs> I'm glad we're sure that this is garbage, because for a while there, the only unattractive thing with many colors I could think of was a set of bagpipes, and that, was, <laughs> that had me worried all the heck. There. What can you do with garbage? Do you make something out of it? Uh, use it for fertilizer or something? Or? It, that's possible, but I have nothing to do with that. Nine down and one to go, Miss Francis. Maybe he's a selector. You, no, uh, you don't run around with a brush and a pail yourself, do you? <laughs> Yes, he does not run around with a brush and a pail himself. He's a commissioner. Are you a, a, do you have some rather dignified title, like commissioner of garbage? Vice <laughs> 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 president in charge, I mean. <laughs> we'll have to flip the lid. Mr. Clancy is captain of a scow. Oh! <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. Nice to have you with us. <laughs> yes. Wouldn't that be owning your own dump? <laughs> He gets an the dump. Oh, he's just the captain. He's the captain of the oh, scow, All right, in just a moment, we'll meet tonight's mystery guest. But first, here's Dick Stark back from a vacation. Back from vacation and glad to be back on What's My Lion, reaching for the Remington. You know, friends, we had a really wonderful time in Europe this summer, and purely by coincidence, of course, I happen to have here a few pictures of that world-famous traveler, the man-sized Remington electric chair. But let me show you now. First of all... Here is the hostess handing me a Remington aboard the Pan American Stratocruiser where it's standard equipment for passengers who want to get their clean shaven. Now, here's a rather neat one of our hero in action. You know, of course, that the Remington is powerful enough to shave the bristles off a brush. Well, here's my Remington shaving the very tough bristles off my very unusual Tyrolean hat. <laughs> Never forgetting, of course, the peach, which proves how gentle the Remington is. Here we are, shaving the short, close fuzz off of an Italian peach. And I want you to notice the expressions of amazement on those faces. Isn't that wonderful? And they were amazed, too. And finally, oh, this is terrific. Here I am showing the Remington to a native who could really use a shave. And what's more, he got one. You know, friends, this Remington of mine traveled about 10,000 miles this summer. And wherever I was and whenever I needed it, it gave me a quick, close, comfortable shave without any of the muss and fuss that goes with messy, wet shaving. Yes, sir, the man-sized Remington is the perfect traveling companion, just as it's the ideal way to shave at home. And that's why, throughout the world, more people buy Remington electric shavers than any other make. It's the most popular shaver. In fact, my friends, the word for electric shaver is Remington. Tomorrow, I wish you'd stop in at your favorite store or Remington Rand Shaving Headquarters and pick one up on the 14-day free trial plan. And then... To start the day right, every morning, you just reach for your Remington. The Remington Electric Shaver. <laughs> now we come to the special feature of our show. God bless you. Somebody just sneezed. The appearance of our mystery celebrity. My friends on the panel uh, have, of course, blindfolds for this part of the program. Arlene's got a new one. <laughs> Looks like somebody's lifted her eye. But the blindfolds are all in place, are they, panel? Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Will you come in, Mystery Challenger, and sign in, please? All right. Panel, as you know, in the case of our Mystery Challenger, we get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with um, Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you accustomed to appearing before audiences? Yes. Are you in some form of the entertainment business? Yes. Are you a performer? Yes. Are you something <laughs> other than a plain dramatic actor, or I don't mean plain, but a, a straight dramatic actor. <laughs> yes. Um, are you funny? <laughs> no. One down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. You sound funny to me. <laughs> might you be described, uh, or well, might you have ever been in motion pictures? Let me... Find that out. Have you ever been in motion pictures? Yes. Have you ever played a lead in a motion picture? Yes. Uh, do you work in television? Yes. Do you have a regular program? <laughs> <laughs> Would you ask that question again, Steve? I say, do you have a regular program? We can keep this just between us, you know. <laughs> no. That's too tough a to go, Miss Francis. I'm really not sure from the roof <laughs> whether it's a man or a woman. Uh, is this a... Is, are, you a are you a male? Yes. 
Well, why did you wait? <laughs> Is there only one person there? Yes. I guess John went home. <laughs> <laughs> but now, you are, not a, you are not a, a, a particularly a dramatic actor. You are not a comedian. Do you sing or dance? Yes. Uh, do you sing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you must have hit some bad notes to get your voice into such terrible shape. <laughs> Have you sung in theaters? Yes. Ah, uh, you are Bobby Soxer's delight. I'll answer that one. Yes, Miss Bent. Um. <laughs> Actually, I didn't have to answer it. Have you? No, my goodness. Uh, are you on lots of jukeboxes? In them. On them. <laughs> Would I be going too far if I asked you to say one yes out loud yourself under your own steam? I mean, now that you've let off steam? <laughs> no? Yes. All right. What? It, you, you want to hear I one? just would like to hear... That isn't, that isn't the gentleman's regular voice, is it? No, it is not. No. That, but it, we'll give you one yes, see what happens. Give me one yes, sir. A girl tries so hard to get a yes from a fellow. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Should be vice versa. But anyway, give me a yes. Yes. Uh, are you fair? <laughs> and warmer? <laughs> I would think, generally speaking, you might say fair, yeah. Um, are you a young man that has made crying an indoor sport? Yes. <laughs> well, there's the yes that did it. Is it Johnny Ray? Yes! <laughs> Johnny, you did a wonderful job. Hope you had a lot of fun. It's nice well, I was to a little see. worried because I know Mr. Allen so well that I was afraid if I spoke in my normal voice, it would be a dead giveaway because... Uh, I knew that he was, he probably was more familiar with my speaking voice than anyone else, and so we had oh, to be Johnny, young. now that now you Pull fooled me. us so marvelously, how about giving out with just a little something that we'd all recognize? <laughs> well, I could do an impression for you. I uh, just finished a picture out in Hollywood, and I suppose the best thing I can do on a company is an impression that uh, Dan Daly did of me, which he originated on the set of this picture I just finished. And it always struck me as rather funny. Of course, I've seen quite a few impressions of myself here and there. <laughs> but uh, on, the, on the set, he always used to have this running thing where he would do cry, and it always went like this. If your sweetheart sends a letter of goodbye... <laughs> <laughs> I must also add that I always had a comeback for him. I used to look at him and I'd say, don't forget, Mr. Daly, in this picture you play my father and I don't have to listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Johnny, this is uh, one Mr. Daly I would like you to listen to. <laughs> Spell the name differently and everything, so it'll be all right. It's awfully good to see you here in the East. What uh, brings you to New York? Well, Wait, before you do that, you were very nice. I think this is the first man I have ever known from Hollywood who talked about a picture he was in and never gave its name. Now, what is the name of that picture you just made? I can't remember. Made? <laughs> Carl, there's no business like show business. Well, good. Now tell us why, why, what brings you to New York. Well, 20th Century Fox is having a premiere here Tuesday night at the Roxy for uh, Daryl F. Zanuck, The Robe. And, I, and it's for the March of Dimes. And we uh, came back... Uh, we finished the picture and we came back expressly f for that purpose and we'll be there ourselves Tuesday night to sort of carry it on. Now this is for um, uh, 
March of Dimes, isn't it? Yeah, what the did Egyptian? I say? You said the role. Well, I got, ner- I got so nervous with this. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, then either you're going to be here to be a part of this uh, New York yeah, premiere. Yeah, the Egyptian March of Dimes premiere, that's right. Right. Actually, the, the uh, premiere is very important because it's anticipated that uh, out of this premiere, which John has come to lend his good offices and his fame to, they will make uh, some $40,000 for the March of Dimes. I've been watching my television set, and uh, I know very well that a lot of you have heard a good many people remind you about the March of Dimes, which is in an emergency campaign now. So I'm not going to tell you much about what it does. You ought to know that. I think you do know it. And I also think you know how important it is to support the March of Dimes in this emergency. So uh, you, no matter where you live in these great United States, do your bit for the emergency March of Dimes campaign because uh, we haven't licked this thing, polio, yet. We better get to our lasts and do something about it, something extraordinary. Well, Johnny, we had a wonderful time. I think you, you had a good time. I hope so because it was nice having you with us. I was us scared, and... but it was worth it. Good. Would you say <laughs> bye-bye to the panel? If you get it all... And now I would like to remind many of you, or some of you, those of you who would be interested, that if you'd like to try to puzzle our panel with your occupation, there's a very simple course to follow. Send us your picture, a small snapshot that you can spare, because we can't return it. Your name, address, occupation, and when you expect to be in New York. Send this not to me. That delays it. Send it to What's My Line, CBS, 485 Madison Avenue, New York 22, New York. Well, we'll be back in just a moment, but first, here's Dick Stark with a reminder. Friends, earlier in the program, I showed you this picture, you may remember, of my Remington being shown to a native in Italy. Well, that that particular model is Remington's new auto-home combination. And in this picture, you see me using that wonderful shaver in that beautiful square in front of the Fizzi Palace in Florence. Now, remember, this is the shaver that actually plugs into the cigarette lighter of your car. It's ideal when you want to spruce up for a date when you've gone on a business trip or if you've just gone fishing. It's the new Remington 6-volt and 110-volt Auto Home Electric Shaver, a product of Remington Rand, famous too for Remington typewriters and the finest in business machines. Before our panel says good night, may I remind you to tune in again next Sunday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time, when once again we invite you to play What's My Line. For other localities, check your local listings for the date and time of our weekly series. Yes, more and more and more and more people are switching to Stop It Spray Deodorant. Because Stop It, with its anti-immunity factor, is now more effective than ever. Thanks to this anti-immunity factor, when you use Stop Et daily, you get full effectiveness day after day. It never lets you down like this. So switch to Stop Et spray deodorant. Look for it at your drug or cosmetic counter in this new Help Yourself display. <laughs> and now, until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss <laughs> Dorothy. Good night, Steve. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, boys, and good night, Arlene. <laughs> good night, boys. <laughs> good night, Mr. Collaback, wherever you are, and good night, John Daly. <laughs> Who is Mr. Collaback? Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network.